Mr. Big D here with Tennessee Flatbedder. What's going on? We're over here going to talk to a husband and wife lease team truck. Simple Plan Trucking is their YouTube. Make sure you go follow it and check it out. They have been interviewing instructors and they're coming out with a new series on it. But we're going to talk to them about how it is living together on a truck. A little bit about lease company driver and the lease driver being in the same truck. And um, if they try to kill each other yet, who knows? <laughs> So how's trucking been for y'all? Wow, that's a that's a loaded question. Yeah, it's all the out. way. <laughs> well, I guess uh, to, to start, we we, get, we started uh, together as a team um, around the end of March. Right, the end of March was where Brooke tested out. She got her CDL, and the timing was great for us because I came in the very same week to upgrade. Um, a lot of people may be raising their eyebrows at that and thinking, "Wow, you're brand new and you're training." But yes, Prime, Prime does allow um, husband and wives to work together and one or the other to train, even if they're new themselves. Uh, but it has been an adventure because uh, I was brand new myself. So Brooke came out on the truck and, and I'm trying to teach her how to back. And, and the truth is I barely knew how to back myself. So mostly I've been uh, doing most of the backing and she's been um, slowly coming on and doing a little at a time. But uh, it's okay because it wasn't as if she was going to upgrade and then be off on her own. She continues to stay with me on the truck, so she was, she's still learning at a slower pace. And we're both kind of learning together. How did he talk you into coming out here? I don't even know how you manage that. <laughs> I question that some days myself still. But um, I started watching the video. Too. I think for me, I didn't want David to go out on his own and not be around. Pretty much said, if I'm going to do this, we have to do it together. So I was kind of cornered, and I knew it was something that he wanted to do. I knew that he um, was kind of at a in a dead spot at the VA. He just wasn't enjoying his job, and um, he was ready for something new. So kind of adventurous. So I thought I would give it my all, and I committed to a year, and I committed to do my best. Um, and I just saw him making some videos. He was like, Oh, we're going to do this. I said 10 years, we've compromised on five, and we'll do it for five years. Okay, five years. But I fully committed to a year. Okay. <laughs> fully committed to that <laughs> one year. Let me just be clear. <laughs> but, you know, in all honesty, there's more to the story than that. I, I did work at the VA, and I, I had a lot of satisfaction in my work. I was a registered nurse by training. That's what I'd done for the last 15 years. And I had risen, you know, pretty high in the VA. I had a good job. I made close to six figures. Uh, and people would say, well, why would you ever leave that to come and start a new career in trucking? And so a lot of people did say that, my family included. And um, but, but the real kicker for me was, uh, I'm sure you all remember a couple years ago that the, uh, our government came out and made the decision that all federal employees were going to be required to take the COVID vaccination. And uh, that would have included me working in the health field. And, uh, you know, not to get political at all, but I just have a real problem with the government telling me that I have to do anything. And so um, I made, that was one of the things that just pushed me over the edge. You're not going to tell me that I have to do it. So. Especially since you fought for your right to be able to right. have that freedom. Yeah, I mean, that's nice. And I, I did. I, I, was, I served in the Army. But the truth is, we all have that same right as Americans. Yeah. And I feel like, as a group, we don't stand up for our rights enough. And, so I did. I mean, it was a tough decision. I had 15 years. I had five more years to retirement. And uh, I would have had a healthy retirement at the VA that I pretty much walked away from. So to come do this, I had to see that, that financially it was going to make sense to do it. And, and you know what? It does. I mean, with bringing, nice. with, with bringing Brooke on and her driving together as a team, we are in line to more than double the money that I made working at the VA. So it's, Especially since I wasn't working. Oh, you weren't working? No, I've always been at home, so... How did, that, how did that work with the job history? Well, I called my recruiter and asked about it because I, I needed to know, are we going to have a problem with it? And they said, no, there's really no problem at all. It's only a problem if people have a break in history, if they worked and then they haven't worked, or they can't explain what happened for this period of time. The truth is, Brooke has always been a stay-at-home mom and has no work history. Well, there's I a difference. Have some work history, but years, twenty years. It's been yeah, almost twenty years. Yeah, yeah. So, so 
she said that won't be a problem at all. Barbara Brown was our recruiter, and uh, and we've never had a sale. We, did, we we both sailed right through without any problems. And I think that was one of the best things about Prime, and that's another way that um, David got me on board is they were very flexible with getting us in and letting us work together. And like anything, I was hesitant about because one of my I was like, I'm not going to be on a truck with a stranger. I'm like, I'm not doing it. I said, girl or male. I said, I'm not doing it. So it's just weird. Yeah. Now I say that, but I know there's like hundreds of people out there doing that, and I say God bless you because there's like privacy time that you know, and personal time, and we get stinky and just you know, just, I'm like we go longer than we'd like to sometimes without yeah, a shower. The and job I, and calls I get for tired that. and cranky, and and I'm like, I think to myself, you know, all the people that um, all the other students that I trained with for PSD and stuff like that, and they went out on the trucks, and I'm like it like for them? I'm like, because I can get away with whining or complaining about something to David and he still loves me and isn't going to kick me off the truck. You never but almost kicked her harder. off? Well, no. I, well, there's been a couple of days where she's threatened to walk off and I start to pull the truck over to let her off. She, she changes her mind. He just sends me to the back. So there are some spats out there with a husband and wife on a team truck. Just to well, say, we went from banter to quarreling to some yeah, it, we would be lying if we told you that everything was sunshine and roses. Yeah. It's definitely not. It's not. I mean, there are a lot of challenges being new together on the truck. And, and the truth is, I used to go to work every day and come home at night, and we would be together in the evenings and some on the weekends. Well, now we're together every minute of every day. And I love it because I love her, but I won't say that it's without its challenges. You have no private time or personal time at all. Sometimes you just got to get out for a walk or something. I was answering someone's comment, and um, she was talking about the arguing that her and her husband do on the truck. And I said, I feel like I live in my husband's man cave, and I can't get out. Like, there's no way out. <laughs> I never thought about it like that. I this like in is. his man cave, because even there's, you can't girly it up, you know. Like, right. trucks are dirty. So, no so I have the best of both worlds. I get to live in a man cave, and she keeps it clean for me. <laughs> and then you never get that satisfaction of that shirt, that curtain slamming shut. You got to kind of have that that cabinet it's open as you slam thing the curtain and slam that door. door at the same time. <laughs> I threatened there, one time. That 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 you can't keep quiet. You can't, you can't shut. I mean, she can go by the curtain, but that mouth doesn't stop. <laughs> He's like, "What are you saying back there?" Well, if I wanted you to hear it, I'd be loud enough for you to hear. <laughs> I threatened to get a little cart to hook on behind the trailer that when she gets out of line, I'm going to tell her to go get in her box for a while. But the good thing it might end up being your box. You're though. exactly right. Yeah, that's, that's the truth. The good thing is it's fleeting. You know, any any little things that happen, they just they they come and they go, and you know, five or ten minutes later, everything's just. You have to be able to let to the normal. words. You have to be able to let it go. You know, things are said in frustration. Mm -hmm anger sometimes but uh, the, the bottom line is we're together and we've been together a long time and we're going to be together in a long-term marriage even when it's challenging you have to forgive and forget and good communication goes long ways so uh, yeah. it's great we're, to have a good communication that. going yeah that's the biggest thing i preach with all my students my kids any part of my family communication is key to make anything regardless of family or a student that's Absolutely. And sometimes I think I fail her because she is my wife, where I don't communicate as well with her as I would if it were a stranger, because I would feel like I needed to, like I had to explain that right. better, where I'm like, sometimes I'll be like, well, we're just going to do this, and she'll want to know why, and it just opens up the Well, in some sometimes. of our arguments, it's really funny, because by the time we get to the end of it, we were literally saying the same thing, just differently. Just differently. <laughs> And so it's just like constant, you know, we're using different words or different angles or whatever. And then by the end of it, I was like, we're saying the exact same thing. We meant the same thing. And so it's kind of silly, but just work through it. So, so no. go ahead. how is it with the, the way you guys operate uh, the income coming in? I, I know you're a lease and you're a company. company. So how, how, what's the benefits and the cons against that if you've seen any cons at all yet? Oh, I, well, I don't think there are very few problems. In fact, you know, if you if you um, talk to anybody that does this, that has the setup that we do, um, it's almost like the elusive unicorn. It's perfect. You know, it's the perfect world because 
um, all of the income that we make for the truck goes into the same bank account. So, you know, if, if you were to team with another person, that income is split. Maybe not 50-50, the, the, the lease driver would pay the company driver whatever they agreed to. So there's a lot of risk in that. If you're a lease driver, you still have all the expenses. You have the truck payment, you have to pay the driver, you have to pay all their insurance, all that kind of stuff. Do you pay her more than you would pay a normal teammate, or? I pay her much less. I much pay less. Pay as, as little as, as possible. little as possible because. You need to tell them you're worth more than that. <laughs> it's okay. The, the I'm, truth I, is, I all the money is freely, hers. so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the, it's smart to do it that way because she, she will pay less taxes as an individual. Oh. She pays her taxes based on what I pay her. And the insurance. So. I have the insurance. You're on her insurance. She carries our insurance. Okay. We just actually activated that this in June. It started. Yeah, that's three months. A consideration for new people coming in. You have to wait uh, 90 days from when you start. So we had no insurance. So we went up 30 days, rolled the dice with no insurance. Now I'm double covered because I'm a veteran, so I can get all my care at the VA. But for a short time, Brooke had no insurance at all. There was no getting hurt or sick. And the profit. So you're you're making great money out here doing yeah. this, running a team truck as a lease operator? Yeah, I hesitate to talk specifics because we say all the time that, that everybody's situation is different and there are good weeks and there are yeah. bad weeks. So let me start by saying that. But just in round numbers, um, uh, I, w I sat down with a friend today from the company who kind of watches for us and helps keep track. And, and he was commenting to me that um, we've been out about three weeks now. Um, on this run, and uh, he told me that we had already passed twenty thousand dollars in revenue, and so um, that that's money to the truck. Now, after expenses, we make about half of that. So, you know, in three weeks, to, to make uh, ten thousand um, dollars is is average for us. We have some weeks that we do much better. There are some weeks where we, I've made we as a team have made brought home after all our expenses were paid nearly seven thousand dollars. That's real so, good. Um, it's, it, but it's not always like that. Yeah. So um, I, I do think, though, you know, I, I, people talk about it all the time. I've heard both of you guys talk about lease versus company. There is no right answer. The right answer is whatever's right for you, whatever works for you. Right. But I do honestly believe that all things considered over the long haul, there will be good weeks and bad weeks, but you're going to make significantly more money uh, lease than you do company. Especially when it's a husband and wife team and all the money's going into the same account. Yeah. And I like to go home. <laughs> that was part of my stipulation is I want to go home every five to six weeks. And so David came up with a, um, a solution to that because it's like, well, it's not always going to be possible to do that. He said, how about we go home every $25,000? So that gets Business me out there. Right there. Yeah. So that kind of motivates me to be like, okay, we got to make money, got to keep those wheels turning because. This last run, we were out two months. Yeah, we have eight weeks. But that we was hard. Yeah. So, so what's the game plan right now? It's five years. Is there a certain thing that you're trying to do, like maybe pay off houses, sure. yeah, live so, debt free from here? Yep. Our, um, our the name of our channel is Simple Plan Trucking, and what it is, we do have a simple plan from the very beginning. We said we're going to work. The number isn't out there for sure yet. She's committed to one year. We're going to work at least five years. And uh, the goal is to pay our house off and um, to put a significant amount of money into the bank. And then I'll be to retirement age where I'll have my Social Security. I will still have some retirement from the VA. So we have several streams of income coming in that will be very comfortable uh, in retirement. But um, and yeah. really our house and our car right now. now we have we one car that we're still paying off and we're making a house payment other than that we're debt free so that's awesome yeah we'll, we'll be able to do it we i mean we're, we're at least going to double up on the house payments and my goal is that the house be paid off in three years so you know for us that's an 1800 dollars a month payment that we won't have in retirement and then those last two years you can just build up for that winnebago or yep. the rv go out traveling more yeah, be stuck in the same little con Fancy fancy fans fans that I want. Well, we we'll yeah, also have fan. some other things we're looking at doing. So, you know, eventually we'll get to the age where we won't want to drive anymore. Everybody does, right? Oh, yeah. So, 
you know, maybe five years, it may be six or seven years, but as soon as they open the lease purchase back up, we're going to buy a truck, we're going to pay it off, and then we'll own that truck when I retire, and I'll continue to drive maybe once every two weeks. Maybe she'll come with me, maybe she won't. So we can kind of ease into retirement that way. We wouldn't have to do it full time. And we're going to continue following the channel. So is it going to continue on after you leave trucking? Or is the plan complete so the channel's complete? You know, I, I, we thoroughly both enjoy doing the YouTube. And it's about meeting people. It's about relationships. You know, I, I watch channels that are about stuff, like technical stuff, because it's important to know that. But we both agree that what we really like watching is, is stories about human beings and, and, and individual journeys that people are having, like you guys, you know, and you were my trainer and we got to know each other, but oh, yeah. I think since we're all doing this YouTube thing together, we all grow individually, but our relationships grow collectively too. It's, it's, it's a pretty oh, yeah. awesome thing, and that's the beauty of Prime. One of the beautiful things about Prime, we're all doing YouTube. But I don't think there's any competition between any of us at all. We all succeed together, right? Right. By yeah, working exactly. together and producing this stuff and getting the word out. I hear you guys say it all the time. You love seeing people grow and seeing people go from making nothing to come in and you're able to put them in a place where they can have a great income. So, oh, yeah. yeah. We're, we're part of that. That's, that's the greatest feeling. That, that's kind of what motivates us is we yeah. kind of are motivated by what we can what we can give somebody to move his life up and to a better position. Sure. And it feels great to hear some of these student stories that, hey, I came from nothing and this is where I'm at now. Right. And and you're right. You follow my YouTube channel. When you came in, one of the first things you said to me, if you remember, is you're all like, I feel like I've known you for a long time. <laughs> I didn't know but it's you didn't weird. know me at all. No, I didn't know I you. I watched you a lot. So like, thanks for um, knowing me. Now I get to get to know you. And we had a great time and you know we experienced a lot together and we both have grown and we kept in touch and i love watching your youtube i feel like both of y'all have a real genuine channel channel like everything recorded y'all are just like we're gonna post it no matter if she was all like i told you not to go down that road don't go down that road you know like i think a lot of people would have made the same simple mistake and she's all like no i told you not to go down there we made a commitment that when we make the videos, for the most part, we're going to leave the stuff in there because the good and the bad and the ugly needs to be in it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's yeah, life. That's, that's real like. life. If you, if you watch some of my stuff, it's raw. I don't stop because I messed up my words. If, if you don't understand me, keep watching. You'll get to the point where you'll, <laughs> you'll see what I'm talking about. Absolutely. And my wife always says I don't English. I wing English. I wing it. So... Uh, I just keep it in there. When I say something messed up, even in our lives, yeah. he jokes at me. But I'm serious. It's it's true to the heart. If you hear what I say come out, yeah, that means it's honest and truth. Well, that's so. interesting that you say that too, because I remember back to being on the pad with both of you guys, mm -hmm. and I was I was brand new. I didn't know anything. You know, I didn't know what a ninety was or an O one or any of that thing. And so there's a certain amount of lingo that comes with trucking that you have to learn over time. So I'd be standing out there listening to you guys talk, and it was almost as if it was a foreign language, right? But over time, you get to understand that and get better with it. And following y'all's channel has been very enjoyable for me, even though a lot of the topics and the same questions come back over and over. By nature of what you do, you always have new people wanting to come in and interested oh, yeah. in Prime. But it's a great approach. Your presentation's great. It's always entertaining. And yeah. the banter between you guys is just uh, <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, hilarious. Yeah, we're Reefer, we're Reefer Squad. Uh, FBG all <laughs> the way. <laughs> and yes, Captain Dave is in Reefer, so let's get that out the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We uh, Brooke and I drove by last night. Uh, we came by the wash that day, and there was a, a young man out there strapping down his load on his flatbed. Ringing her wet with sweat, working working like crazy, and I looked at her and I said, "Would you ever want it? Is there any any day ever that you would think about wanting to do that?" He was shaking his head. He's just like, "There's no way." There's so no way. you should so, talk him into going flatbed because then then whenever y'all finish the five years, he's gonna be all big and buff and <laughs> like I'm not no now. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, he's still, but even bigger. <laughs> Now, I, hey, tip of the hat to you, uh, Thomas, and anybody who chooses to do flatbed, 
it has to be a calling. Um, oh yeah, flatbed is a lot. It's a it's a want to do it. Um, I've had just my interview with my student. He went flatbed, and then halfway through TNT, he's like, I hurt my back trying to lift the load. It was windy. It was raining. I just can't. And he switched over to to reefer. Yeah, yeah. and that's a beauty you can. But uh, the the person that was sitting behind me, he stayed reefer flatbed the whole time. So, and then he just actually got his picked up his truck today. Yeah. So. And I was telling you about another friend of ours, JDQ Transportation. He's got a YouTube channel. Started in reef, uh, started in flatbed, came to reefer, and he missed it so much that he's getting outfitted right now. He's going back to be flatbed. Sounded like oh, yeah. he's going to wait to get back into it. <laughs> Switch back and forth. Try different. Who knows? One day I might do flatbed, but don't hold your breath. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Well, about your TNT. So I know that you had more than one TNT trainers. Yeah. Brooke must be able to get along with people a lot better than you because she only had one trainer. Well, <laughs> that's a loaded question. That's not going to change anyway. But it really wasn't anything like that. Um, with uh, I, I started off, as most people know, with um, uh, Eric uh, with Driver Lineup, and he did a great job. Uh, we started we started started off and, and, and got along great. Um, we had an issue with the truck, which the truck was broke down for about a month. Uh, he had a brand new Pete, and as you know, the Pete's come out, they've got issues, they've got to be worked through, whatever. And you compound with that, with his wife was getting ready to have a baby, she was pregnant, and I, I think somewhere along the, the way he decided he wanted to be at home, and hey, more power to him, he's moved on now, he's not even, he still has his fleet, but he's not trucking himself anymore, he and his wife have moved, and they live in San Antonio now. But, you know, I'm very thankful to have had him at the beginning. Finished up with uh, Jacob at JD Crew Transportation. Young guy, young enough to be my son, but you know he and I hit it off great. We had a good time too. In fact, we uh, went out to eat the other night while we were in town. So uh, I think David learned a lot having two different trainers because he had two completely different experiences with both of them, and their ages were very different, and the amount of time they've been working was very different. So in the long run, I think he benefited. benefited yeah, I had many gaps, you know. As you know, we had COVID. I was home for a month for PSD. I was home for a month in TNT. So it took me a long time to get through all my training. But like I told you yesterday, you know, God has a plan for all of us. And believe it or not, I came in to upgrade the same week that she passed her CDO. Yeah, so I, I upgraded and we were able to roll out to start her TNT the same oh, yeah. way. And it wasn't even coordinated. It just worked out that way. So how is it for how is it for a woman to be over the road? Because a lot of people like to ask this, and they're all like, "It's hard for a woman to be out there." Is it much different? The bathrooms are a little tricky. Um, I wouldn't say it's different. I just don't think um, you're not going to get any pretty time out there. Like, there's no you can be try to be girly but <laughs> like it's it's a dirty job um it's a dirty sweaty job i'm tired most of the time just because it's hard to sleep on a moving truck and when you're teaming you really don't stop so um i think when you are, are on there by yourself solo you get that 10 hour break and so you're you're still and you probably get more rest but it's it's hard i'm not the type of person that needs to um the type of woman that like I don't need to prove myself to be out there with the guys kind of thing um, but I do get satisfaction in knowing that I can do the things by myself and you found ways to deal with most of your problems right like restrooms you may stop a little bit earlier or go into a ship I never a miss an later. opportunity to use the restroom so David's on his shift he's like I want you to get some sleep I'm not going to wake you up and I said if you stop you better wake me up because I just just in case. Just in case. And so, because, you know, you go to those, um, the truck stops have clean bathrooms. You go to these places, like, we've been to Walmart and, I don't know, some places that I'm like, you're kidding. I'm not, I'm not going in this restroom. I'm like, there's just, this restroom was built and then no one else ever, no one ever came in here to clean it. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's legit. I'm like, it was built, it was probably nice for about a month and then it's like straight out of a horror show. So, I so, think, though, too, that you know, I'm gonna, so I think a lot of it is your point of view on things. You know, we come to it from a little bit different perspective. Brooke wants to do life on the road. I want to make money. So, you know, there have been days where I've told her, 
you either get to sleep or you get to take a shower, but you're not going to do both right now. And, and I'm serious when I say that. She gets mad at me, but she knows now that in a team truck, you got to keep rolling. you got to yeah. keep rolling. The wheels ain't turning. It's not making That's money. That's right. right. But I'm, I'm glad that y'all, you figured out, hey, before I go into a shipper, try a stop at the truck stop before so I can use it's the restroom. things room. like that. And then I've gotten, um, I've surprisingly, I've really enjoyed trucking. I love it because I love being at home and, and growing my plants and things like that but um, I enjoy getting to know the truck a little bit like I like to uh, kind of like engines and seeing how things work and then there's times that we've had things go wrong with the truck that I was able to point it. out yeah. to David and so you know there's I don't gloat about that or anything but there's some satisfaction in knowing that I'm doing a good job out there it just day before yesterday, the thing that brought us in here was we, we left, a, we left, uh, we did a pickup and we got down the road and the air, air pressure was lower than it needed to be. It looks like there's something wrong here. And when I tell you there's something wrong, I'm usually right. He was arguing with me about it. The little, that little red button, the brake thing was going, Shh. it's not supposed to do that. So, so we, we went back over. and forth and I was driving and I was like, it's not supposed to do that. That should stop. And so sure enough, it's going to be fine. I pulled over and the whole, what is it, the, the brake The trailer bag, the, airbag the air on bag the left was side, smushed and not smashed only was, it. was deflated, something had hit it and knocked it off the base. It was completely shot. Hmm. We picked up the trailer and we didn't catch it on the pre-trip. But so we called Road Assist and they said, well, you're only about 60 miles from Springfield, bring it on in. We did and they switched it out and we're ready to go. But more times than not, Brooke's the one that catches that stuff. Um, so she Our hub seal is leaking. I'll be the first to admit she's more mechanical than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one more question before we finish. Ha I always hear about team team drivers leaving teammates at a truck stop. Has that happened yet? Have you left yeah. her or she left you on accident? We, we joke sometimes and accident. say she would get... No, not on accident. No, we, we wouldn't know. Oh, yeah, like you think they're in a truck sleeping and they're yeah. into That's yeah. never happened. That's us. never happened. I thought you were talking we... about one of us got mad at the other one. No, yeah, no, 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 no. I have another thing where I pretty much want him to go in the truck stops with me. Okay. So I've never, so far anyway, I've never encountered um, any problems in the truck stops, but I just feel more comfortable knowing that, you know, I'm walking in there with somebody and stuff. And I don't know, it, it can... Everybody's been really nice, but once in a while I've had like people leer at me and you're just kind of like, you know, uncomfortable. it just makes you uncomfortable, so. But I'd say when you team with your with your wife or your husband or your spouse or whoever, your significant other, don't ever think it's going to be an equal proposition like you would when you team with your co-driver. It should be equal. Everybody shares the weight, right? Right. I, Brooke has not yet fueled. Not I'm that, fueled. I don't make you get out with the most of the time I get out. I in outbound? Food. She feel, filled in outbound. She handed them the car. Yeah, yeah. She gives them the car. He didn't feel good not too long ago, and I, and I was thinking about it, and I was like, if he gets sick, I have no idea how to get fuel. Like, I have no idea the stuff he puts in the telephone. I have no idea, like, how he sets it all up. Like, I could probably pump the fuel, maybe. And so little things like that, he... He tends to do the dirtier jobs. Yeah. I usually and crank. I kind of, yeah, I mean, there's some times where she could not twist the landing gear down. You know, just physically, I wonder about some of these smaller, especially women. It's, it's, it's. I have to put everything on it sometimes to get that landing gear to move. Well, there's a lower gear on it too. Yeah, yeah. It just yeah. takes longer, so yeah. we don't. We're impatient, is what it That's is. True. That's true. It's not that she can't do it. It's that we're impatient. We're all like. Would you hurry up? We're trying to get out of here. These t these tires ain't turning, and that's my money counting down right now. I have found that I can do a lot more with that truck than I than I thought. So, but the point is, there's a lot of give and take, and yeah. there's a lot of forgiveness, and there's a lot of um, patience. Patience, and, and honestly, I think it makes you grow stronger as a couple when you come out and you do something like this because it yeah. is challenging. I believe it. I believe it. So. We're going to let them go ahead and get back to making the tires turn because we took them off of the road for a little while and Dave's probably, Captain, is probably, <laughs> is probably ready to get the wheels turning on that truck and make some money, it sounds like. Oh, and yeah. You know, y'all yeah. gave him that nickname sometime when he was out here. No, no he, he kept, he got it somewhere. He just came home with that name. I'm like, why did they call you Captain? 
He came up with it. I, I'm Captain Greg. I'm Captain, I was in Captain in the Army. That's what it was. Yeah. He told me that on his truck, so he was going to use the Captain. And I, I respect that. I like it. It sounds oh, yeah. good. It's, it's sketchy. Uh, it's People like a captain it. of a boat, captain of the truck, there captain of the ship. It has stuck. Well, we're out of here. Thank y'all for doing the the video with us, and we really do appreciate it. Make sure y'all subscribe to the Simple Plan Trucking. Subscribe to it. Leave comments. Give it a thumbs up, and follow their journey, please. Take care, y'all. Bye, y'all.